Tonight, a big reward on offer for clues which could help police crack a major cold case. And Arium's administrator confident the final sale is fast approaching. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening. It's been 15 years since Susan Goodwin was last seen leaving a supermarket in Port Lincoln and today detectives called on the community to help them crack one of our region's most frustrating cold cases. A police task force is now hoping a $200,000 reward will also uncover new leads on where her body might be and who her killer or killers are. Police are convinced someone must know something about what happened to Susan Goodwin in 2002. SAPOL forming an unprecedented task force to hunt down her killer. I've no doubt that um, the person or persons responsible for this murder will probably be watching tonight as well. It's completely likely that they've told other people about it and we'd encourage those people to come forward. And to assist with prompting people's memories, Task Force Lincoln is offering a $200,000 reward to anyone whose information leads to a conviction. Detectives warning those staying silent or in hiding Time is running out. It's the people who might have been told something in the past and they've kept their dirty little secret for 15 years. Now's the time to come forward because if they lie, if they cover up, if they mislead or impede the investigation, they risk their freedom. 39-year-old Miss Goodwin was last seen on July 19, 2002, buying groceries from both Coles and Woolworths. Investigators confident her murder took place not long after. It's reasonable to assume the body is located either in Port Lincoln or proximate to Port Lincoln. Drug links to the case have been speculated and police are yet to rule that out. There's no proof that drugs are the motive, but there's nothing to completely disprove that either. The task force will include experts from CIB and Port Lincoln Police and local police cars will feature an image of Susan's face. Businesses and suburban households will also be asked to assist. It's in relation to the uh, disappearance of this lady back in 2002. If anyone has any information that may be able to assist. SAPOL has high hopes the campaign will unearth a breakthrough in the case and urge anyone who has the smallest piece of information on Susan Goodwin to make contact with Crime Stoppers. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Meanwhile, police have already spread their appeal for information on the murder of a mother and daughter in Millicent in the state's southeast. Investigators are looking into the movements of a man charged over the deaths. They want to hear from anybody who may have seen his white 1998 Subaru, Subaru Outback with the registration S564. AAS. Police say he may have travelled to Broken Hill and surrounding regions in the days leading up to the deaths. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. RM's administrator has updated Whaler residents on the sale process at Council's monthly meeting last night. Sebastian Ham says he hopes to return to next month's meeting with some good news regarding the future of the steelworks. For 12 months, Sebastian Hands has spoken at nearly every council meeting, updating Wyler on the sale of Arium. But last night was different, as it was the last briefing before a new owner is announced. He says Wyler should expect news very soon. A fair bit of water to go under the bridge before we get there, but I'd expect that to be the case, yes. He spoke about a number of matters, including Adani's order for 54,000 tonnes of rail for its Carmichael coal mine. It sparked a war of words between the state and federal governments over the significance of the deal. While Mr Hams wouldn't buy into the debate, he says it's a good order. If the project goes ahead, it's 54,000 tonnes of rail for the steelworks, which is not an insignificant order, and, and it's important that we, that we fill the order book. And he's confirmed the company is keen on supplying projects announced in the federal budget. Things like the inland rail and, and some of the other rail projects that have been announced, so yeah, they would be a, a positive for the steelworks. It was also announced the ore beneficiation plant at Iron Knob will be ready by June. At a time where ore prices are once again falling, Mr Ham says the plants will help weather the storm. Getting the most out of what we have uh, is the absolute focus of the beneficiation plants. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Gusts of wind brought Flinders power workers to a halt today as they continue to apply topsoil to the former Alinta power station site. While as part of the rehabilitation program to revegetate the ash storage area around the site, there have still been complaints of odour and dust. 
laying down topsoil on 273 hectares of what was once a Linters ash storage area is no easy task. While Flinders Power says it uses dust suppressant and water to reduce dust, they were no match for today's wind. It's, it's you know, quite a windy day regionally today, so... Um, the crews uh, uh, were working this morning, but we've actually stood them down um, this afternoon because of the, uh, the windy and blustery um, conditions. The company says it has covered 40 hectares so far and expects to finish the project after summer when the northern end of the area has dried out. The bulk of the ash dam itself will be covered in topsoil um, this year, but uh, the northern end uh, of the ash dam, the northern tip of it, and also the polishing pond may well be covered and seeded um, next year following drying over summer. While efforts are being made, a sulphur-like odour is still in the area. The Mayor says Port Augusta deserves a commitment in the state budget to develop the area after the council recruited an engineering company to compile a report on the Bird Lake site. So I'm strongly optimistic and crossing the fingers and toes that the state government actually come forth and give a commitment on this. We know that there was a, a handshake given some months ago that they would work with us on a solution to Bird Lake. The report will be discussed at a public council meeting on Monday night. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. A teenager has allegedly gone on a rampage in Wallaroo, tearing up the local sporting oval. The 17-year-old boy allegedly drove onto the oval at the corner of Cornish Terrace and Moonta Road on Saturday night. The grass has been ripped up and tyre marks now protrude over the oval, leaving locals heartbroken. Police arrested the driver on Sunday morning. He's been reported for misuse of a motor vehicle and will appear in court at a later date. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news and investigation finds Wyala's mayor breached her code of conduct. The details ahead. Welcome back. A report has found Wyala Mayor Lynn Brewer in breach of the local government code of conduct. The report, tabled at the council meeting last night, listed seven allegations against the conduct of the mayor with an independent investigation, finding she did breach sections of the code in one instance. John Hunt has the details. It's no secret tensions are high between certain factions of the Wyala City Council, and this was laid bare last night. Bullying allegations have been levelled against Mayor Lim Brewer in a report tabled at the monthly council meeting. Seven complaints were made against the mayor in matters ranging from her behaviour at meetings to email exchanges between council members. An investigation conducted by Kelly Jones lawyers dismissed six of the seven complaints, saying the mayor did not breach the code. However, in one complaint, which accused the mayor of verbally attacking two councillors during an informal meeting on September 8 last year, Mayor Brewer was found to have breached the code. The law firm found she breached clauses 2.3 and 2.9 of the Code of Conduct, which instructs councillors to act in a reasonable manner and maintain a respectful relationship regardless of differences in opinions. However, the investigators dismissed claims she acted in a threatening or bullying manner, based on the evidence presented. The the report noted that Mayor Brewer voluntarily apologised for her behaviour later on in the night in question. The findings were due to be discussed at council last night. However, the matter was adjourned as there weren't enough councillors present. It's now been recommended that councillors undertake workshops on working together as a group, as well as a course on meeting procedures. At a time where Wyla needs strong leadership, residents are urging councillors to focus their attention on leading the city towards a stronger future. Both Mayor Brewer and Wyla Council declined to comment when contacted today. John Hunt reporting there. The future of palliative care services in the far west of New South Wales has been discussed at a round table in Broken Hill today. 30 health professionals met this morning to talk about how to better tailor end-of-life care in regional areas. Delivering palliative care in places like Broken Hill has its challenges, and that's what today's roundtable was about. We've gathered a, a range of clinicians, medical nursing, allied health consumers um, to bring their ideas around palliative care, what we do well in the far west, what, what our challenges are, and, and more importantly, what the state needs to support in moving forward for palliative care across New South Wales. Distance is a major hassle in the far west, but Ms Cummings says working relationships allows them to deliver the care people need. So our specialist palliative care staff work in key partnership with our, with our partners in health to be able to cover that distance and ensure that wherever someone is, they can receive palliative care. Broken Hill is one of ten roundtables being held across the state. 
The state government saying it wants to ensure people have more choice to die with dignity. Even though I do have some experience in this area, lots of learnings for me about uh, how we can do better uh, and how we can work together to make sure, as I said, everybody, no matter where they live, gets the very best palliative care services. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Well, it might be business as usual for Port Augusta's Salvation Army as they prepare for their Red Shield appeal, but this time they're making it easier to donate. The arrival of FPOS machines at donation points means those who don't carry cash will be able to easily donate to those in need. The Salvos have worked out a solution to the sorry, I don't have any cash excuse. To have the flexibility of an FPOS machine to be able to make your contribution, I think, is... Um, is really important and it means that we can maximise um, those opportunities when they, when they occur. This year the Port Augusta Salvation Army is hoping to top last year's final donation tally of $14,000 and this Saturday they're hosting a barbecue at the Wharflands Plaza to raise funds. Um, it gives us an opportunity to, to meet with people and to talk about the work we do and um, ways that they can get involved. Mr Cugley says the Salvos are always looking for local volunteers to help with their community centre. Um, I volunteer here as well as, as um, do some paid work and, and it's, it's important to me to be able to give back to um, the community that I live in. He says people can shop at the Salvation Army op shop or donate at their front door where volunteers will start their annual door knocking from this Saturday. It's, a, it's a, an excellent um, uh, way that the community can continue to support the, the work for people that are vulnerable here and um, yeah, Port Augusta has uh, always been a, a generous community. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us when we return after the break. A treat for a cause, pink buns fighting breast cancer. The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. Three new probationary constables have joined the Broken Hill Police Force for a three-year stint. They say they're adapting to life in the Silver City and looking forward to getting to know the region during their stay. Here's Patrick with this week's police talk. A trifecta of young blood joining the ranks. They're on deck and add to our strength um, here on the streets. Probationary constables Josh Joliffe, Robert James and Tristan Summers have completed their induction courses and are now hitting the streets of the Silver City. I didn't know much about Broken Hill before I came out here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not really that different to any other sort of town. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. Josh is from Newcastle. And while the location change is a big one, he's embracing the challenge. It's really nice and I love the scenery. I've like, been getting out of town a little bit as much as possible and um, just the town's lovely. A lot bigger than expected too, which made me feel a bit better when I first got out here. It was a case of in with the new and the return of the old on the weekend as dozens of former lawmen converged on the city for a reunion of the Barrier Area Command. Retired Superintendent Ken Ferguson, who was stationed in town in 1955, and retired Assistant Police Commissioner and former Superintendent in the region, Clive McLaughlin, were notable guests. Not a few stories, they had long, a long reach here, but it's, the facts can't change, and we have a few good laughs and some serious stuff you think about nowadays, hard things to accept, but that's policing there. Yeah. While the three constables didn't have too many stories to swap with the veterans, they were welcomed by all. And Superintendent Smith says the New South Wales Police Force is now recruiting and it's a career path that has many benefits. It's a great, a great career, good opportunities and, um, you know, uh, uh, getting out here, we're always looking for staff at Broken Hill, so your chances of getting back to the hill if you're local are pretty good. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. Baker's Delight in Port Pirie is calling on the community to drop in and give breast cancer the finger bun. Till the end of the month, 100% of finger bun sales will go towards the Breast Cancer Net Care Network. Hot out the oven this week is a batch of very special finger buns. It's about supporting women who have breast cancer. It's not about research, but it's about supporting those people in the time when they're, they're suffering through breast cancer. As part of the annual Pink Bun campaign, Baker's Delight nationally aims to raise $1.5 million through finger bun sales. We have finger buns every day, so all of our finger buns, our pink ones obviously the pretty ones, but we all of our finger buns are donated towards Breast Cancer Network. You can't miss the shop, it's overflowing with pink spirit. We have pink ladies that people can make a donation towards and a lot of people like to write a little message of support or in memory of someone on a pink lady. Now every day for the next three weeks, the bakers here will make around 100 of these delicious pink finger buns. 
and that'll mean around $150 going towards the fight against breast cancer. Everybody knows somebody who's been affected by breast cancer, so everybody has a story or a, a person that they're thinking of when, you know, when we're promoting and supporting this event. The nationwide campaign is on until the end of the month. Kazia Sullivan, Southern Cross News. To sports news now in Broken Hill AFL export Isaac Cumming played his best game for the Greater Western Sydney Giants since being drafted to the club at the end of last year over the weekend. While the Giants reserve side suffered a loss on Saturday, Isaac was a standout, racking up 27 possessions and laying five tackles in his best game of the season so far. The coaching staff said he spent most of his time in the midfield and that he displayed plenty of class with the ball. Well, a massive weekend for netballers in Port Lincoln and in Port Pirie as well. Jason Kemp joins us now with the results from the weekend. And, Jace, we've got some undefeated teams continuing their pretty good form right across the region. Tim, it's only early days, but we're seeing some standout teams in the netball divisions this season. Port Lincoln's Waybacks cruising to victory over the Imperials. In Port Pirie, Central Risden continue their perfect start and remain undefeated after tumbling St Mark's by 13 goals. Solly's also showing promise, taking the points against reigning Premier's Port by 19. St Joseph's continue their hot form in Port Augusta, defeating Railways by 8 points, while Magpies overcome the Vikings in a tight game. In Wyala, the Warriors remain on their quest for back-to-back -back titles, defeating Kiwi, while True Blue dominated Rupina. And finally, in the Northern Areas netball, there were wins for Broughton, Flinders and Ururu. Turning to soccer and Lincoln Knights had a defiant win over South Coast 3-0 while Lincoln Raiders edged out the Masters in the dying minutes. Over to Port Pirie and Northern Demons continue their dream run with a five goal win over Playford. While in the Amateur League in front of a home crowd, Savoy drew with Garn Kilburn. Over to Broken Hill when Celtic defeated Alma three goals to two and St Joe's accounted for West 3-1. And finally a look at Broken Hill tennis. The volleys were too good for the forehands and top spins easily accounted for the backhands. Well, Tim, that's sport for another week, but we'll be back on Friday with our expert footy tippers across the region. And if you want to see your local results on TV, make sure you drop us a line at localsport at sca.com.au. Good stuff. Thank you, Jase. Well, stay with us after the break. A look at how the local weather is panning out. Welcome back. Time now for the weather and that change is pushing through. There are a few showers about the place today with 25 at the top in Port Augusta and 23 in Wyala. Port Lincoln 21 today, 23 also for Port Piri. Broken Hill also 23 but fine. On the national satellite image, that cloud cover continues to push across the region, so we can expect more of those showers over the next couple of days. Out on the waters, the winds to 20 knots and northerly for the most part, seas to a metre and southerly, sunrise around 5 past 7. So more showers around in two tomorrow, 21 the top in Port Augusta and in Wyala. Port Lincoln 21, 20 for Port Lincoln, showers and 22 in Broken Hill. Then looking ahead, staying wet and 21 degrees for the rest of the week in Port Lincoln. Cleve, though, should start to fine up later in the week, though. 20 on Thursday and on Friday. Much the same in Woodner as the showers clear into Friday. Wyala with showers and 20 for Thursday, then a fine 19 for Friday. Port Augusta 21, then 20 as it finds up. Kadena 20 both days as those showers continue. Port Lincoln with 20 with showers, then a fine 19 in Port Pirie. In Port Pirie, I should say, for Thursday and for Friday. Clare with 16 and 17 to run out this week. Broken Hill with rain and on Thursday, a top of 18 degrees, then showers into Friday, ahead of a fine weekend at this stage. And that is the local news for this Tuesday. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email and catch past bulletins on our YouTube channel. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from 6.30. I'm Tim Hadfield from the team here at Southern Cross News. Have a good evening. Good night.